Greetings. I am Legacy Moon, and this is True Crime and Mysteries. Welcome back, my current subscribers. Welcome to my people that come in but are not subscribed. And welcome to those of you who are here for the very first time. Today, we are going to be doing the Nesto Williams story, Love, Lies, and Alibis. You know, I was sitting up and I was thinking to myself, hmm, who would be a good cast for this movie? So I came up with some ideas and I'm going to show them to you. And you can let me know what you think. Or even better yet, let me know who you would put in the Nesto Williams story. Then after this video, I will be dropping the um, the story. Now, I don't quite have, I don't know if I'm going to have it all ready tonight. That was my plan, but I'm not feeling like that's going to happen. So tomorrow night, I'll be putting something out that um, you guys would be interested in listening to, I'm sure. I was also, um, before I started recording, the phone calls from prison had posted a call. And I listened to some of it, but I wanted to get finished with this so that I could do some other things. But I just want to say about that call, the scheme team, they need to stop. First of all, Nesto can't remember his script. That's a big problem. Man, if you see, you're so used to pulling lies out of the air, you can't do that. This is your court case, hon. You have to stick to the script, you have to get things right. And then I'd like to know why is. The blogger, you know, the infamous prayer warrior. Why is she on that call with them? That call, I think, is from April the 24th. Why is she on the phone? And then uh, Ponytail is going to um, call her by a different name. Like, we don't know her voice. Come on, girl. Y'all need to stop. This is the most juvenile and the most... They just need to quit. If Sonia, she she needs to go back to script writing school because she has just. She, I, first of all, I think us as the audience know more about Nesto's case than Sonia. Like I said, and will continue to say, you have never seen that woman with a binder, a folder, a pad, a composition book, a nothing, a, a flex folder, nothing with any of his documents in them. And I bet you she doesn't, the most that she has is the police report, I believe. She, I believe she has that, but she does not have any of the documents. If I was helping this man and I'm going to free him and this is just a big injustice, I would have like stuff. And when I go on these platforms, I'd be holding up papers. See, this says that I'd have, you know, I'd have that sucker highlighted and, and arrows drawn and everything to prove all of my points. But her, she, she doesn't have anything but her mouth. And she don't know what she's talking about while she's telling some of the story or reading her script, whatever she's doing. But like I said, I, I have no clue why the prayer warrior is was on that call. It it makes no sense. And what what they're doing is they're just digging a hole deeper for him and for someone who has seven seven whole pending court cases going on. You would think she'd sit down somewhere, have several seats. Maybe a stadium of seats. I don't know. But you need to have some seats. And I'm going to tell you something else I'm finding very suspicious. This, what I'm getting ready to say, happened on a call that we just heard uh, maybe a few days ago. And then today, when he talks about Sheridan, 
he's making it seem like he, well, first he says that, um, why they keep saying, why they keep throwing Sheridan under the bus. Now you've called this, uh, child a bitch. You don't do nothing but talk about her. You said she's lazy. She won't work. She won't do nothing. Now, all of a sudden you're feeling like they're throwing her on under the bus and they don't know why, um, it keeps being said that she's a victim and he made it. It's, it's almost like I said, he can't stick to the script because every time he brings her up, he brings up the, the, um, the SA and the CP. And I'm wondering why, because initially Sheridan was put on this order he went and forged her name on a lease, him and, and his attorney, Erica King, a.k.a. April Holloway, and all the other attorneys that she pretends to be. So why every time her name comes up here lately, you are you are like immediately going to CP? And that's not what it was about. She was a victim because you have taken her name and used it at a, as on a residence that she doesn't live at and didn't know about. Next time, whenever you, you guys listen to the content creators who are going to be reviewing the calls, listen for that part. When Sheridan's name comes up, he starts talking about SA and CP. And I'm going to tell you, I, I find that to be very telling. Now, I could be reaching, but I don't think I am, but I could be. Another thing he keeps pointing out is that before he got arrested, him and Melanie Scretchen had squashed everything. And she she told him that she forgave him. So he doesn't even know why she's involved. And the thing about the million dollars and they said a whole bunch of victims were going to come forward. And he said he hasn't seen them yet. That's not what was said. They said they believe there are more victims. And if you are one, please come forward. That's what was said. I don't know why. And then, this is the kicker tonight. He talked about how these two bloggers, and I'll just say the names because I'm, I know that's who he was referring to. He's referring to Dennis and Pam. He said uh, the, that, that uh, blogger or whatever from up north and that man who said he has his paperwork and he has a right to be there recording, they go on there and on their platforms and they said all those victims' names. And, you know, how does he, he said, he's, how, does, how does he know that? Because he said it as if it were something that he saw. How would he know that? One of his, um, the people on the scheme team had to tell him. Now, he would know that Pam and Dennis were there because he saw all that. But how would he know what they said or did on their platforms? How would he know this? And I'm going to tell you another reason why I know this is all scripted. She done typed him all this stuff on the iPad because, you know, they had gotten to a point because, you know, their little uh, prayer warrior friend had told them what words to use so that, um, you know, you it couldn't be played on YouTube. Now, all of a sudden, they're saying CP and the R word and all that now. And I don't know if it was what I saw today or if it was something that was a couple of days ago. One time he was talking and he said the CP word and Sonia corrected him and said, you mean CP? So they're talking now, all of a sudden they're talking so that it's YouTube friendly. Whereas before, you know, they, just, their blogger friend, when she told them what the buzzword words were, and if you use them, they can't play the call, you know, they started doing that. But now all of a sudden we're using YouTube friendly words. You're only doing that because you are putting on a performance for us. And I got to tell you, that script 
it, it's it's not any good. And we all know Sonia can't write, you know, cor- the correct way. So we all know that to begin with. And her lack of knowledge of pretty much all things is preventing a good script from coming out. I mean, it's like sitting up watching reruns of the Three Stooges. Some of you, you know, may be old enough to remember. Some of you may not. I know when I saw it, of course, they were reruns back when I did, when I saw them. So, but watching the three of them is like watching the Three Stooges. They just, oh my gosh, it's it's a mess, a mess. And I'm going to tell you something else that doesn't look too good in his favor. You, we know he's always recording everyone. And he said he always records. I want to know how he's going to turn that around. Because the thing of it was is, is that he's being accused of doing some things. And it involves recording people and recording inappropriate behaviors and doing inappropriate things. And lastly, I didn't mean to rant this long, but lastly, I wish that man would quit saying his calls were leaked. He's got the prayer pastor right there and she goes to see him and she plays the calls. And he says he's aware that that's what they're doing now. So why is it that you feel the calls were leaked? How do you think Sylvia's getting them? They not being leaked. I mean, they, they, they're they not thinking this plan out. And if he doesn't realize, he probably just hasn't even thought that far to realize, hey, they're obtaining these calls illegally. And he was just whining, you know, he can't, you know, everybody's turning their back and he can't even speak freely and have a conversation over the phone. Negro. You are what is called state property. You are under their care. You live in their house and you have to follow their rules. And per their rules, you, there are signs telling you things that are going to be recorded. Your phone calls are being recorded. Your visits are being recorded. They have the signs posted. You're made aware in your state property. And we're citizens of the United States of America And as citizens, we want to know what your criminal behind is doing. So until you come out and you're in the world and society like we are, we can listen to any and everything you do. And we can even get your letters and laugh at those. And I swear I wish there was a way that we could get that iPad communication. I really do, because I'm very interested in it. But the man who is upset because his recorded calls is being leaked, is the same man who records his mentally ill daughter or whichever one he recorded and spent the last six months telling his best friend and his son to find that recording because said recording was going to help him in court. I don't know how. Someone having a breakdown or episode is going to help him in court. And and instead of comforting that person because they are your child, you're recording them, which goes back to you recording inappropriate things. And I don't think a lawyer would even introduce that or, or anything. I just don't I don't think so. And since I bought that recording up, as I, I said in another video, that the prayer warrior played this under one of her paid memberships. It is my understanding she did this under the $499 tier. Yes, I said it, $499. And what I will say is, I, from what I was told, the, the video really didn't, doesn't prove anything. And They said that it was almost like he was antagonizing her anyway. So that's that on that. I'm going to get in to this movie. So I've created the cast to the movie. And we're going to talk about just for a few minutes because I've held y'all long enough. But um, and I want you to tell me 
who you would put. Get in them comments. Tell me who you would put as the cast or if you agree with my casting choices. So let's get into this. Now, the title of this movie is The Nesto Williams Story, Love, Lies, and Alibis. Now, first, we're going to begin with the star of our show, the man, the myth, and never a legend, Mr. Nesto Williams. And playing him will be the one and only Blair Underwood as he stands there shirtless with the zip tie cuffs behind his back. Yes, Blair Underwood. You know, first I was going to go with Leon. I was on the fence, but I I just, I, I settled with Blair Underwood. So that's who I would cast. Next up, we have Miss Shirley, a side piece could never. Strawberry. And playing her would be Miss Shirley Ralph. I think she has the elegance in the class to pull it off. I did not. I was kind of thinking maybe Vanessa uh, Bell Holloway or Calloway. You know, the one from Coming to America and things. You know, I was thinking her, but I, I settled with Miss Cheryl Lee Ralph. Now, unfortunately, this yard bird is a part of the cast, so we have to put her in the movie. And I figure, you know, Nia Long could play play it off. Now, if y'all can remember many phone calls back, when Nesta was talking about, you know, his book and the movie and, and all of that, you know, he had said that Jada Pickett Smith would, would play uh, Sonia Good. And I, I don't think, so. I think Neil Long, I think she could handle it. Although that, uh, no, let me not talk about edges, but yeah, that's my choice. And of course, we have to include Dion. Now, Dion, you said you was a fine mofo and we should have better pictures of you. So I got the best one that I could get my hands on. So I hope I did you justice. But I think, you know, we let's put Offset in there. You know, I, would, would that be his first movie role? I think he could do it. He could hang. Now, you know, Andre is going to get a piece of this. Yes, Andre. We he's Dre, Uncle Dre. He he is part of the cast. He is a fan favorite to some. And who else to play him but Mr. Ving Rames? I this was the first person that came to my mind, and I think he could do Uncle Dre good. We are not going to forget about Mr. Lamont. Now, Lamont, he's kind of mysterious. He's not always around. He's either talking shit or being a motivational speaker when he does appear. But I think that Steve Harris could do him justice. Daryl here, you know, he's an original cast member. He's been there since the beginning. Now, I will say his appearance in the movie, if you count both of his visits that he made, it totals up to about maybe eight and a half minutes when you put the two visits together, and that's all the time that we have with with Daryl. But you know he was he's there. You know he didn't want to be in the wedding because he didn't want his picture taken, and he was in and out. It took Nesto longer to walk to the spot to do the visit than what the visit lasted. So yes, Daryl. And we we gonna have Marlon Wayans play Daryl. I think he can do it. He's 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 you know, he can do those serious roles. We saw him in Aretha Franklin's story. He was serious and then there was that other story that was on Amazon Prime a few months ago where he played I forget who he played, but it's that um uh, Michael Jordan about the, the Jordans and, you know, his mama played by, um, 
Oh my goodness, that beautiful black dress, her name is escaping me right now. But the one who had, you know, how to get away with murder and woman king and, and just all these fabulous roles. Her I cannot think of her, I cannot believe I cannot think of her name right now, but but uh yeah. He can be a serious actor when he wants to, and I I just think that he would really be able to Viola Davis, that's her name. But anyway, he would really be able to capture the seriousness and effectiveness of Daryl. We have to have a cameo appearance of Mr. Steve Harvey in this movie, you know, because he was, you know, wailing and complaining about black bloggers and stuff like that, you know, when Shirley was doing her strawberry letter. So it's only fair that we include him. You know, he was kind of like the kickoff to it all. The rumors were going around that he introduced uh, Shirley and, and Ernesto, and they wanted to clear that up because by all means, Steve is not trying to be associated with any of that. So yes, he he will have a little small cameo in this movie, which is pretty much all I can stand of that man anyway. Can, can I just say for a minute, how does a man who has gone through two divorces, is it two or three, two divorces, one ending because he was cheating on one with the other and so on and so on. That's his first wife He did it with Mary and then he did it with Mary. Wait a minute, let me get it straight. He had his first wife. He cheated on his first wife with Mary. Then he married Mary and then he cheated on Mary with Marjorie, who is someone that he was messing with before anyway. But anyhow, how is this man the oracle of of love and, and how to get, be a couple and stay a couple when his track record isn't that good? I'm just saying. I think that um, Keenan Thompson would be a good Steve Harvey. And plus, I think on Saturday Night Live, he, he did... Um, an impression of Steve Harvey before. So for as little time as he's going to be part of the cast, he could slide in there, do his rant, and just slide right on out. Towards the end of season one of the reality show that we are watching right now, this lady who was a blogger by the name of infamous Sylvia, but I call her, you know, the uh, prayer warrior or the bishop over there at the International Church of Prayers and Convicts. You know, she made herself a cast member. They didn't hire her. She made herself a cast member. So uh, we we have to, I know y'all may not like it, but we have to include her in the movie. And I think that Marsha Warfield would do a wonderful job. You know, she might have to do something, you know, change her voice, speak in a different octave, but I think that she would do the character of infamous Sylvia Justice. We know she knows how to cuss. She's got a potty mouth and, you know, I just think the, the, just look at them. I mean, they, they look like they could be related. So that's who my money is on. Who would y'all pick to play her? I mean, you just really hate to put that on an actress because, you know, Marsha Warfield, now some of you may not know who she is, but, you know, she she was a successful comedian and she does still do acting. I've seen her on a few shows, so... Yeah, y'all read about her, but she can definitely pull off the infamous one. Yes, my people, there you have it. The cast of the Nesto Williams story, Love, Lies, and Alibis. Not to be confused with the Nesto Williams single. I won't be producing that one, but this is a story, like I said, 
if you guys have characters in mind that you would like to see play the cast members, let me know in the comments. I would really, really love to hear what you have to say. And, um, you know, you can change the, the, the cast if you want. You could, yeah, who, I'm curious as to who you don't even want to see in the, in the, in the movie. So yeah, y'all do that. Y'all get in them comments and let me know what y'all think and how y'all feel about it. And I will talk to you in the next one. Well, 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 it seems this video has come to an end. Once again, I'm Legacy Moon. I thank you all for watching. And if you are not subscribed, get on over there and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you know the next time that I post a video. And please, 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 if you don't mind, make sure you hit that thumbs up video. Get those likes to liking so I can be in the algorithm.